morning. Our minister David um, will be receptions after the service and could you to help them. So let's go back to the thing. Got the bread available inside. You can take as much as you want. Do you notice it? We did have a care group leaders meeting after the service few minutes and exit this final service this Sunday at 4th of August. Give you flyers somewhere to show you. Um, no, pass it on, please. Thank you. Thank you. Morning. Good to be sharing in worship together. Welcome to friends in Mark as we share a joint service today this morning. Um, have a birthday today. So it's Hugo's birthday. So happy birthday. Sh shall we sing to her? We should. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you, happy birthday dear Hugo, happy birthday to you. So as we gather to worship, start with a prayer, let us pray. Lord of all, we come to offer all that we have and all that we are, body, mind and spirit. We come to offer you our joys and struggles. We come to celebrate your extravagant love and abundant gifts. And to give thanks for your unending promises to us. Lord of all, Teach us to hold nothing back, to give our all as we serve you in the world. Amen. The theme this morning is extravagant worship. About the abundance of God's blessings poured out upon us, how we respond in worship and praise. Join together to praise God in our first hymn. Christ is made the sure foundation, Christ the head and cornerstone.
Let us pray. Your face is shining upon us, Lord. In our worship, we reflect the light that comes from you. You lift up your countenance upon us. We are blessed. And lift up our hearts to you. Amen. Father, we confess that we are often half-hearted when we come before you. We lack commitment and passion in our lives and in our worship. Yet you are never half-hearted towards us. You commit yourself to our care. Although we do not deserve it, you love us with a passion beyond our understanding. We are sorry for our lukewarm love, and our lackluster worship. We recommit ourselves to you and to your proper praise and adoration. Amen. feet may falter as we come before you, but you forgive us, O Lord. Our eyes may be downcast as we approach, but you forgive us, O Lord. Our minds may be busy with the cares of the day, but you forgive us, O Lord. Amen. Praise you, Almighty God hands and hearts raised in thanks. We worship you with praise and thanksgiving, voices to sing with joy, and instruments to proclaim your glory. We are grateful for the many ways in which we can worship you, with our whole bodies, or in the quiet contemplation of overflowing hearts. Thank you, O Lord, this your house, a place of prayer, and joy, and worship without limits. Amen. Continue to praise and worship God as we sing together. Come on and celebrate His gift of love. We will celebrate the Son of God who loves.
lectionary readings at the moment are taking us through some of the stories um, in uh, the book, two books of Samuel that we heard last week. Uh, the story of David, we hear another story about King David now, when the Ark of the Covenant, which had been uh, lost for a time, had been restored to the people once again, and gathered together in extravagant worship. David gets so carried away that he dances around for the Ark of Covenant, joy and praise before God. So as you hear, not everybody liked it when he did that. So we hear our reading from the second Psalm. morning from the second book of Samuel, chapter 6, verses 1 to 5, and then 12, to 19. The ark brought to Jerusalem. David again brought together all the able young men of Israel, 30,000. He and all his men went to Bala in Judah to bring up from there the ark of God, which is called by the name the name of the Lord Almighty, who is enthroned between the cherubim and the ark. They set the ark of God on a new cart and brought it from the house of Habanadab, which was still on the hill, Uzzah and Io, sons of Ab- which was still on the hill, sorry, Uzzah and Io, sons of Abinadab, were guiding the new cart with the ark of God on it. And Io was walking in front of it. David and all Israel were celebrating with all their might before the Lord, with castanets, hearts, lyres, tambourines, rattles, and cymbals. Now King David was told, The Lord has blessed the household of, e- of Obed-Edom and everything he has because of the Ark of God. So David went to bring up the Ark of God from the house of Obed-Edom, to the city of David with rejoicing. When those who were carrying the ark of the Lord had taken six steps, he sacrificed a bull and a fattened calf. Wearing a, a linen ephod, David was dancing before the Lord with all his might, while he and all Israel were bringing up the ark of the Lord with shouts and the sound of trumpets. As the ark of the Lord was entering the city of David, Michael, daughter of Saul, watched from a window, and when she saw King David leaping and dancing before the Lord, she despised him in her heart. They brought the ark of the Lord and set it in its place inside the tent that David had pitched for it, and David sacrificed burnt offerings and fellowship offerings before the Lord. After he had finished sacrificing the burnt offerings and fellowship offerings, he blessed the people in the name of the Lord Almighty. Then he gave a loaf of bread, a cake of dates, and a cake of raisins to each person in the whole crowd of Israelites, both men and women, and all the people went to their homes. The second reading is from Ephesians chapter 1, verses 3 Praise for spiritual blessings in Christ. Praise be to the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us in the heavenly realms with every spiritual blessing in Christ. For he chose us in him before the creation of the world to be holy and blameless in his sight. In love, he predestined us for adoption to sonship. Jesus Christ, in accordance with all with his pleasures, pleasure and will, to the praise of his glorious grace, which is freely given us in the one he loves. In him we have redemption through his blood, the forgiveness of sins, in accordance with the riches of God's grace that he lavished on us. With all wisdom and understanding, he made known to us the mystery of his will according to his good pleasure 
energy purpose in Christ to be put into effect when the times reach their fulfillment to bring unity to all things in heaven and on earth under Christ. In him we were also chosen, having been predestined according to the plan of him who works out everything in conformity with the purpose of his will, in order that we, who were the first to put our hope in Christ, might be to the praise of his glory. And you also were included in Christ when you heard the message of truth, the gospel of your salvation. When you believed, you were marked in him with a seal, the promised Holy Spirit, who is a deposit guaranteeing our inheritance until the redemption of those who are in God's possession. The praise of his glory. Dancing may or may not be your thing. It's not my thing. If you feel like dancing, that's fine. David danced before the Lord, and uh, maybe partly inspired by that, uh, Graham Kendrick wrote a song called Teach Me to Dance, the Beat of Your Heart. Teach me to move the power of your spirit. So let's sing that.
is the most valuable object that you possess? Do you value it for what it cost or for its associations, meaning, memories perhaps that it carries for you and your family? How do you treasure this possession? Do you keep it locked away securely? Polish it? Give it a prominent place in your home? I wonder what's the most valuable possession that our faith produces. In our reading today, David and the people of Israel are celebrating most precious object they possess, the Ark of the Covenant, which had been lost for a while, had now been restored to the center of their worship. Their core symbol of God's presence is back with them. It feels to them as though they're reunited with the Lord of hosts. They rejoice in extravagant, physical, multi-sensory worship involving the whole community. And with generosity, offering rich food to folk in normal diet was very precious. The Ark of the Covenant was an object of intense holiness was really a container that held the tablets of the law, written, so it was believed, by God's very own fingerprint, given to Moses at Mount Sinai. It radiated a luminous power, creating what people today sometimes call a thin place. God's presence feels very real. I wonder where we find such places of holiness today. Many people recognize thin places. The gap between heaven and earth seems very transparent. We find that on mountaintops or islands where stillness and beauty surrounds. It's about our worship, the worship of our faith communities, a place where we can experience and celebrate the beauty of holiness, the wonder of love. I hope so. There was a joy, an extravagance, an exuberance of David's worship for the Ark Covenant. The joy and sight. Have you ever listened to an excited child telling a story of something that's happened to them? They brim over with enthusiasm barely stopping to take a breath, speaking in long sentences. And then, and after that, and then she did this, and then he did that, and then, and, 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 and it goes on and on and on. In today's New Testament reading from Ephesians is a little bit like that. It has that excited energy. It too is one long sentence, an outpouring of praise about a generous giving of God, it speaks of God's abundance, an overflowing God, blessing, adopting, lavishing glorious grace, freely bestowed, good pleasure. There's an old chorus, I'm sure you know it. Count your blessings 
name them one by one. Count your blessings. See what God has done. Count your blessings. Name them one by one. It will surprise you. Blessings for you. Family, friends, places we visited, food we've eaten, clothes, books, music, medical treatment, the list will go on and on. St. Paul gives us another set of reasons that God has blessed us. Showed us a way of life, calls us to live fully, love free, be all that each of us can be. All the spiritual blessings of the heavenly places, he says, are ours in Christ. We are chosen, credible as it seems. Grace is freely bestowed upon us even though we have done nothing to deserve it or her. He says we are marked the seal of the Holy Spirit. The days before email, remember that? Or even the days before old-fashioned letters, a postage stamp. Documents were sealed with a lump of melted wax stamped with signet ring, the seal of the sender. So when you receive a letter with the seal intact, there is a seal upon it. You that it has not been tampered with, that it genuinely came from the sun. Same way, Paul says, the Holy Spirit seals us with God's blessings, assuring us of the genuineness of His love for us. And in both our readings today, we have an outpouring of extravagant worship and praise, response to the blessings God pours out. All the churches around the circuit at the moment are sharing together in a program called Leading the Church into Growth. And the first session that we had a few months, a few weeks ago, that we've been continuing to reflect upon in our own individual churches since then. The first theme of creating a prayerful culture. Creating a prayerful culture of growth. What is the culture of our churches? In other words, what are the things we spend our time talking about? Is that culture, is that con- conversation dominated by talk or decline? Or of scarce resources. Well, there are very real challenges we face in our conversation often along those lines. Perhaps we're challenged to say, can we conversation? Can we make the conversation about Can we recover the joy of David dancing before the Lord? Or Paul's breathless excitement about God's blessings? Create a culture based, based on abundance. Abundance of the God. The heart of our 
our church's culture needs to be worship and prayer through which we can open ourselves to those resources and blessings God wishes to lavish upon us. Creating prayerful nature How and when do we pray together? Well, here at EHT, we, we have a constant challenge. When is the best time to have a prayer? We go round and round in circles. But we try different days and different times. And well, none of them ever works for everyone. It's good to have time when we can get together and pray. But there are lots of other ways we can pray. We've got the, we've got the WhatsApp prayer chain. We're not on it yet. Word of great, she can put you on. That's another way we pray together. And uh, I thought this morning actually we would have a little have a little mini prayer meeting within our service. Why you've been given a piece of paper as you came. Before we do that, we're going to sing a hymn about prayer. Take us into that time of praying together. I remember Charles Wesley's hymn, Soldiers of Christ Arise. It's one of those hymns that if you sang all of the verses he wrote, you'd be here half an hour. This, this hymn is an extract of three verses from that hymn. It's all about prayer. Pray without ceasing prayer. Your captain gives the word. The summons cheerfully obey. Call. gather in little groups with people around you. Um, there are two
That's over. That's interesting. Yes. Because I'm a swell. I'm to get it to play something. <laughs> <laughs> we get there in the end. Get there in the end. Yeah. Just got some little piano up front. Mm. <laughs> also, if you haven't written something, write something quick. <laughs> Good point to stop it. Thank you. 
is, Lord, may your will be done. Let us pray. Gracious God, we continue to pray for those newly elected to the Dean, for those taking up new roles at home and on the world stage. May they serve with enthusiasm, clarity and courage. Sustain and strengthen them and, Lord, may your will be done. We pray that the responsibilities of office won't weigh too heavily on them and drain their energy, and that each of us may play our part in supporting them and contributing to the life of our community, our nation, and our world. Sustain and strengthen them, and, Lord, may your will be done. We pray for a restraint and a change of heart for those leaders who are more infused by power than peace, by wealth than wisdom, by self than service. Sustain and strengthen those who stand up to them and those who speak out for justice and democracy. Lord, may your will be done. We pray for those across the world and those we know whose enthusiasm for life has been dampened and destroyed by criticism, cruelty, pressure, illness, poverty, prejudice or violence. Especially, we pray for children living in war zones in Ukraine, Gaza and Syria. And we pray too for those who continue to inspire others despite their suffering and hardship. Sustain and strengthen them and Lord, may your will be done. We pray for your church and celebrate with those whose worship is vibrant and joyful. But we pray too for those whose faith has become fragile, whose worship has gone stale, whose congregations have become demoralized. Sustain and strengthen them, and Lord, may your will be done. 
We pray for teachers and youth workers and for all who have the opportunity to infuse young people with a passion for life and with confidence in their gifts. Sustain and strengthen them and Lord, may your will be done. And we pray for one another that we would dance to the beat of your music, be infused by the power of your word and share your living love for all creation, prayerfully, practically and generously. Sustain and strengthen us and Lord, may your will be done. Amen. And we join together in the prayer that Jesus taught us. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Join together to sing our closing hymn offering will be received we sing fill thou my life O Lord my God every part with praise my whole being may proclaim thy being thy
we offer you our praise. We offer you the prayers we have shared. We offer you the offerings we have sent to you. We offer you our lives. We just need you. We share together the words of the Lord. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all now and evermore. Amen.